The distress beacon screamed through the void of space, a desperate plea from a dying ship. Randy Young, grizzled leader of the exiled crew of human mercenaries, narrowed his eyes at the flashing hollow display. An insectoid Mazarian freighter, carrying vital pandemic relief supplies, besieged by notorious space pirates. Intervening meant risking exposure for Randy's band of outcasts, branded as traitors by the Intergalactic Council. Yet the payoff could be immense, a hefty reward and a favor owed by the enigmatic Mazarians. Could be a trap, Jax, the hot-headed pilot snarled. We stick our necks out, we might lose our heads. Terra, the tech-savvy engineer, chimed in. Sensors confirm the distress calls authentic, but Jax is right about the risk. Grim determination settled over Randy's battle-scarred features. He had led this crew of exiles for years, scavenging ancient alien ruins on forsaken worlds like Zephyrus just to survive. This was their chance to be more than mere galactic jetsam, to prove that, despite the Council's brand of treachery, some shred of humanity's boldness and bravery endured. Trap or not, we're going in, Randy declared. Suit up and prepare for combat. We'll hit those pirates hard and fast. Terra, charge the plasma cannons. Jax, plot an intercept course. Brick, he turned to the hulking weapons specialist. Break out the heavy ordnance. As the crew scrambled to action stations, Randy allowed himself a tight smile. The Intergalactic Council had declared them renegades and rogues. But out here in the lawless frontier, they were the only hope for a ship of innocence besieged by bloodthirsty marauders. The only ones brave enough, bold enough, to risk it all for a higher cause. Let the galaxy brand them traitors and outcasts. Today they would show the pirates and the watching stars what traitorous humans were truly made of. The hijacked freighter loomed on the monitor, a fat prize for the circling pirate ships. Randy's crew tensed at their stations, ready for the call to arms. Zeke's fingers flew over the engineering console, prepping systems for the brutal fight ahead. Jax gripped the helm controls, his fingers tightening beneath tattooed skin. Gunner stood poised over the weapons array, calm and focused, a coiled snake ready to strike. Randy settled into the command chair, his scarred face a mask of purpose. Take us in, Jax. Zeke, on my mark, hit them with the cyber attack. Gunner, target their engines and weapons. We hit hard, we hit fast, and we don't let up until that cargo is secure. The crew responded with terse nods, the thrill of impending battle humming through the ship. Jax sent them hurtling towards the pirate vessels, juking and jinking to evade the first barrage of incoming fire. The hijacked freighter loomed closer, battered but defiant. Mark! Randy barked. Zeke's cyber attack sliced into the pirate ship's systems, viruses, and malware rampaging through their computers. Weapons went offline. Engines sputtered, shields flickered, and died. The hunters had become the hunted. Gunner zeroed in on the stricken pirate vessels, his shots precise and merciless. Hulls breached, atmosphere vented, flames blossomed in the void. The once predatory ships spun away, crippled and broken. Boarding party with me, Randy unstrapped from the command chair. Jax, keep us tight alongside that freighter. Gunner, Zeke, Watch our backs. Randy led the charge across the boarding umbilical, mag boots clanging on metal decks. Smoke choked the freighter's corridors. Alarms blared. Wounded Mazarians lay strewn about. Deeper in the ship, the crack of weapons fire and screams of dying pirates echoed. Bursting onto the freighter's bridge, Randy found a scene of chaos. The pirate captain stood over a fallen Mazarian, blaster leveled at the insectoid alien's head. Randy didn't hesitate. He snap-fired from the hip, a precise shot that drilled the pirate between the eyes. The body crumpled, blaster clattering from a lifeless hand. Randy knelt beside the fallen Mazarian, pulling the groaning captain to his feet. Easy there, friend. The cavalry's here. The Mazarian captain, Vega, his name tag read, clasped Randy's arm, compound eyes glinting with gratitude. You saved us, human. Saved the cargo. We owe you our lives. Bitter experience had taught Randy to be wary of debts owed. Gratitude could sour fast in the unforgiving depths of space. But looking into Vega's eyes, he sensed a kindred spirit, someone else the galaxy had chewed up and spit out. 
Let's get you patched up and that cargo secured, Randy said. Then we'll talk about squaring up. Vega nodded, wincing as he clutched a wounded side. Together they limped off the bridge, stepping over the bodies of dead pirates. The battle was won, but Randy sensed their trials were just beginning. Fate, it seemed, had dealt them a new hand, one that would test the mettle of humans and Mazarians alike. On a lonely moon, battered ships nestled in dusty craters, Randy's vessel and Vega's freighter, unlikely companions in the void. In the freighter's cargo hold, human and Mazarian crews worked side by side, tending to the wounded and taking stock of the precious medical supplies. Vega pulled Randy aside, his bandaged torso a mute testament to their shared ordeal. My friend, I must tell you the truth about our cargo and ourselves. We are not mere merchants. We are rebels, fighting against the tyranny of our own government. Those supplies are bound for our secret bases, not the Mazarian homeworld. Randy absorbed this revelation in silence, mind racing. Aiding rebels meant even greater risk for him and his crew. It meant throwing their lot in with yet another lost cause. But looking at the haggard Mazarian fighters, seeing in them the same desperation and defiance he knew so well, how could he turn his back? A commotion at the hold's entrance interrupted his swirling thoughts. Zara, Vega's second-in-command, burst in, her compound eyes wide with urgency. Captain, grave news. Loyalist forces have discovered the location of our main base. Even now they are massing for an attack. Without these supplies, our people will perish. Vega sagged back, despair etched on his insectoid features. But Randy stepped forward, a plan already forming. We'll get those supplies through. Here's what we're going to do. As the two ships raced towards the besieged rebel base, Randy gathered his crew and Vega's fighters. Listen up. When we hit groundside, we'll be walking into the middle of a war zone. The humans will pose as mercenaries, hired by the rebels to smuggle in the supplies. Vega, Zara, your people will have to vouch for us. It's a risk, but it's the only way. Zara cleared her throat, her voice tight with tension. There is more, human. My sources tell me the Loyalists have developed a terrible weapon, one capable of destroying entire star systems. If they deploy it, billions will die, and the galaxy will be plunged into war eternal. A grim silence fell over the assembly. The stakes had just gotten impossibly higher. Failure was not an option. Randy met each of his crew's eyes in turn, seeing the same willpower reflected back. They were exiles, outcasts, branded as traitors. But out here on the edge of known space, they were the last line of defense. The ones who would risk it all to keep the flame of hope alive. All right, people. You know what we have to do. Let's get this done. They hurtled on towards the beleaguered base, weapons primed, minds steeled, hearts united by a single purpose. The fate of the Mazarian Rebellion, and perhaps the galaxy itself, hung in the balance. It would take all their skill, all their courage, to pull off this audacious attempt. But if there was one thing Randy and his band of exiles knew, it was how to defy the odds, how to spit in the face of fate and forge a new path how to be the spark that ignites a revolution. The twin ships streaked towards Axiom, their hulls vibrating with the strain of pushing past maximum safe velocity. Randy gripped the command chair, his squeezing hard. Zara, those transponder codes better work. The Mazarian's antenna twitched nervously. They will. They must. As they approached the Loyalist blockade, a tense silence fell over both crews. A harsh voice crackled over the comm. Unidentified vessels. Transmit authorization codes immediately. Zara's nimble fingers danced across the console. Long seconds ticked by as they waited, engines idling. Reinforcements confirmed. Proceed to designated landing zone. A collective exhale swept through the ships. They'd cleared the first hurdle, but the real challenge lay ahead. Planet side, the whine of engines faded as ramps descended onto Axiom's dusty surface. Randy surveyed the chaos, smoking craters, the distant thunder of artillery, frantic activity as rebels rushed to fortify their positions. We split here, Randy said, hefting a crate of medical supplies. Vega, take Zeke and Jax. Hit that command post hard and fast. Zara, you're with me. Let's get these supplies where they're needed most. The team separated, melting into the war-torn landscape. 
Randy and Zara sprinted through debris-strewn streets, dodging panicked civilians and grim-faced fighters. They reached the triage center, a converted warehouse, its walls pockmarked with blast damage. Inside, the smell of antiseptic barely masked the coppery tang of blood. Wounded Mazarians lay everywhere, some moaning in pain, others ominously still. Doctors and nurses rushed between makeshift beds, their movements frantic yet practiced. Over here, a harried medic waved them over. We're running dangerously low on coagulants and pain meds. Randy pried open the crate, revealing rows of vials and hyposprays. Show me your priority cases. For the next hour, Randy worked alongside the Mazarian medical team. His hands moved with practiced efficiency, stabilizing chest wounds, setting broken limbs, administering critical medications. Zara assisted where she could, her compound eyes wide with a mix of horror and admiration. I didn't know humans possessed such medical knowledge, she said, handing Randy a fresh set of sterile instruments. Randy grunted, not looking up from the patient he was treating. When you've seen as many battlefields as I have, you learn fast. Across the city, Vega led Zeke and Jax through the winding back alleys towards the Loyalist Command Center. They moved silently, years of covert operations evident in every calculated step. There, Vega whispered, pointing to a heavily fortified building. We'll need to bypass at least three layers of security. Zeke grinned, patting the satchel at his hip. Leave that to me. My little friends here will eat through their firewalls like acid through hull plating. They crept closer, using the sounds of distant combat to mask their approach. Jax took point, his enhanced senses on high alert for any sign of patrols. Inside the command center, Zeke worked his magic. His fingers flew across a captured terminal, lines of code scrolling by at dizzying speed. Almost there. Got it. Their comms are about to go dark. A klaxon blared. Intruder alert! All personnel to battle stations! Time to go, Vega hissed. They sprinted for the exit, but a squad of loyalist troops had them pinned down. Plasma bolts sizzled past, scorching the walls. Jax returned fire, his aim deadly accurate. We're cut off, Zeke shouted. Vega's mandibles clicked in frustration. This way, there's a maintenance tunnel. They charged down a narrow corridor the sound of pursuit close behind. Suddenly, Jax cried out. A loyalist round caught him in the leg, sending him sprawling. Leave me, Jax growled through gritted teeth. Vega's compound eyes narrowed. Not a chance, human. He hefted Jax over his shoulder, insectoid muscles straining. They stumbled out into the open air, making a desperate dash for their ship. Zeke laid down covering fire, his shots wild but effective in keeping the Loyalists at bay. Back at the triage center, Randy wiped sweat from his brow. They'd stabilized the most critical patients, but more wounded streamed in every minute. A rebel communications officer burst in, his exoskeleton scorched and cracked. Captain, we've detected a Council recon ship entering the system. Randy's blood ran cold. If the Council discovered their presence here. Zara gripped his arm. Randy, you can't leave now. We're so close to exposing the truth about the weapon. If we can broadcast the evidence, it could change everything. For the rebellion, for your crew. Randy's mind raced. Stay and risk everything, or cut their losses and run. He activated his comm. Gunner, what's our status? Not good, boss, came the reply. Jax is hit bad. We need to extract now. Randy closed his eyes, weighing impossible choices. When he opened them, his face was set with grim willpower. Get the crew out, he ordered. I'm staying to finish this. Protests erupted over the comm, but Randy silenced them with a sharp command. That's an order. Get clear of the system. If you don't hear from me in 24 hours, don't come back. As his ship lifted off, Randy turned to Vega and Zara. All right, let's end this war. What's the play? Zara's antenna quivered with drive. We need to reach the central communications array. From there, we can broadcast the evidence to every corner of Mazarian space. Vega nodded grimly. It won't be easy. The Loyalists are making a push to overrun our last defensive line. Randy hefted the plasma rifle Gunner had pressed into his hands before departing. Its weight was reassuring, 
a extension of his own battle-hardened grit. Then we'd better get moving, he said. Lead the way. The unlikely trio set out into the chaos of a city under siege. Ahead lay their objective, and with it, the fate of two species hanging in the balance. Behind them, the council ship drew ever closer, a ticking clock driving them forward into the storm of war. Battle. As they navigated the war-torn streets, the distant rumble of artillery grew louder. Randy's grip tightened on his plasma rifle, eyes scanning for threats. We need to fortify the base, Vega said, his mandibles clicking with urgency. It's our only chance against the Loyalist assault. Randy nodded grimly. Agreed. Zara, how many fighters can we muster? The Mazarian second-in-command's antennae twitched as she mentally tallied their forces. Perhaps three hundred. Many are wounded. It'll have to do, Randy said. He activated his comm unit. All rebel units, fall back to central command. Prepare for siege operations. The next hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Randy coordinated with Vega, allocating their limited resources with brutal efficiency. Barricades rose from rubble-strewn streets. Snipers took up positions in bombed-out buildings. In the makeshift hospital, medics worked feverishly, using the newly arrived supplies to stabilize critical patients. Zara burst into the command center, her exoskeleton gleaming with sweat. Loyalist forces are massing for attack. We've detected heavy artillery moving into position. Vega's compound eyes narrowed. We can't let them bring those guns to bear. He turned to Randy. I have an elite strike team. With your permission, we'll launch a preemptive strike. Randy weighed the risks, then nodded. Do it. We'll provide cover fire from here. As Vega's team moved out, a rebel communications officer called out, Sir, Council scout ship detected on long-range sensors. ETA 30 minutes? Randy's heart made. If the Council discovered his involvement here, it would mean a death sentence for him and his crew. But there was no turning back now. The comm crackled to life with Vega's voice. Strike team in position, engaging loyalist artillery. Explosions lit up the night sky as Vega's squad struck. Through his macro binoculars, Randy watched loyalist gun emplacements erupt in flames. A cheer went up from the rebel lines. But the victory was short-lived. A desperate loyalist counterattack drove Vega's team back. As they retreated, a plasma bolt caught Zaya, one of Vega's most skilled operatives, in the chest. Randy sprinted to the fallen Mazarian side. Her exoskeleton was cracked and smoking, Icor seeping from the wound. Stay with me, soldier, he urged. Zaya's mandibles worked weakly. Listen, there's a black site, top secret weapon. Her voice faded as her life ebbed away. Randy's mind raced. This could be the key to exposing the truth about the Mazarian regime's plans. But time was running out. He keyed his comm. Zeke, I need you to breach the Loyalist network. Find everything you can on this weapon. As Zeke's team of hackers went to work, the Loyalist assault intensified. Plasma bolts sizzled overhead as Randy sprinted between defensive positions, shouting encouragement and relaying orders. Sir! Zeke's voice crackled over the comm. We've breached their network. You're not going to believe this. The weapon's next target is a human colony. Randy's blood ran cold. The stakes had just gotten impossibly higher. A thunderous roar split the air. Randy looked up to see a massive warship descending through the atmosphere. His heart sank as he recognized the configuration. Status report, he barked into his comm. Unknown vessel, came the reply. Not council, not loyalist. Wait, we're receiving a transmission. A familiar face materialized on the command center's hollow display. Randy's fist clenched as he stared into the cold eyes of Max Anders, his former mentor, now his sworn enemy. Hello, Randy, Max said, his voice dripping with false warmth. Looks like you've gotten yourself into quite a mess. Randy's mind raced, searching for a way out of this impossible situation. But he knew one thing for certain. He would rather die than let Max get his hands on the information about the doomsday weapon. The fate of billions hung in the balance, and Randy was all that stood between them and annihilation. Randy's eyes narrowed as he stared at Max's smug face on the hollow display. You're too late, Anders. 
The truth is already out there. A distant explosion rocked the command center. Debris rained down as the Loyalist forces pressed their advantage. Zeke, Randy barked into his comm. Tell me you've got that data ready to broadcast. Working on it, boss, Zeke's voice crackled. But our transmitter's barely holding together. Vega limped to Randy's side, Icor seeping from a gash in his exoskeleton. We need to buy more time. Randy nodded grimly. Zara, gather everyone who can still fight. We'll... His words cut off as Zara crumpled to the ground, a smoking hole in her thorax. A loyalist sniper had found its mark. No! Vega's mandibles clicked in anguish. Randy dragged the Mazarian behind cover as plasma bolts sizzled overhead. Stay with me, Vega. We're not done yet. The command center's systems flickered, then stabilized. Zeke's triumphant voice filled the comm. Transmission sent! The whole galaxy's about to know what these bastards were planning. A series of explosions lit up the night sky. Randy peered through the shattered windows to see Max's ship listing, smoke billowing from multiple hull breaches. A rebel strike team had seized their moment. This is our chance, Randy said. We need to move. Now. They fought their way through the chaos-filled streets. Gunner and a handful of surviving rebels provided covering fire as Randy half-carried Vega towards their extraction point. Behind them, the sounds of battle began to shift. Confused shouting from Loyalist troops suggested the broadcast was having its desired effect. A battered freighter swooped low, ramp already descending. Randy recognized Kala's ship, piloted now by Zeke. They clambered aboard, plasma bolts pinging off the hull. As they lifted off, Randy caught a glimpse of Max Anders being dragged from his crippled vessel by rebel forces. Their eyes met for a moment before the freighter banked hard, leaving the war-torn planet behind. In the cargo hold, Vega slumped against a bulkhead. His compound eyes dimmed with grief and exhaustion. So many dead, he rasped. Perhaps, perhaps it would be better to surrender. Let the Council sort this out. Randy knelt beside the Mazarian. It's not over, Vega. We can still make a difference. A priority alert chimed on Randy's comm unit. He activated it to find a final message from Kayla, recorded moments before her death. Coordinates flashed on the screen, the location of the black site housing the Mazarian Doomsday weapon. Randy's mind focused. He looked around at the ragtag group of survivors, human and Mazarian alike. They were battered, exhausted, and hopelessly outgunned. But in their eyes, he saw a familiar fire. Listen up, Randy said, his voice carrying the weight of command. I know we've all lost too much, but we've got one last chance to finish this, to make sure no one else dies for this madness. He laid out Kala's intel, explaining the opportunity before them. Faces set with iron will as the magnitude of the task sank in. It's suicide, Gunner growled, but there was no hesitation in his stance. A grizzled Mazarian veteran named Kaldor stepped forward. If we're going to die, he said, mandibles clicking, let it be for something that matters. Randy nodded, a ghost of a smile tugging at his lips. All right, then. Zeke, plot us a course through the lawless sectors. We need to stay off the radar. As the freighter jumped to hyperspace, Randy felt the weight of billions of lives on his shoulders. They had one shot at this. One chance to stop a weapon that could destabilize stars themselves. Where to first, boss? Zeke called from the cockpit. Randy's mind raced through their limited options. Set course for the nether reach, he said. We've got a smuggler to see about some firepower. The stars blurred outside the viewports as the battered freighter plunged deeper into the galactic fringe. Ahead lay pirate warlords, Mazarian shipyards, and a heavily fortified black site. But for now, Randy allowed himself a moment to breathe. They'd made it off Axiom alive. Whatever came next, they'd face it together. The Nether Reach lived up to its reputation. Randy's crew found themselves in a grimy spaceport bar, negotiating with a Trandoshan arms dealer whose scales glistened with oily sweat. This enough for you? Randy slid a data chip across the scarred table. The Trandoshan's tongue flicked out, tasting the air. Mazarian military codes, useful, but not enough for what you're asking. Gunner growled, hand inching towards his blaster. 
Randy held up a warning hand. What else do you want? The alien's eyes narrowed. Information. What's got the Mazarians in such an uproar? Randy hesitated, weighing the risks. Before he could respond, alarms blared throughout the station. Security shutters slammed down over windows and doors. Attention all beings, a synthesized voice announced. Multiple Mazarian warships detected on approach. This is not a drill. Chaos erupted in the bar. The arms dealer vanished in the pandemonium. Randy keyed his calm. Zeke, warm up the engines. We're leaving. Now. They fought their way through panicked crowds to reach their docking bay. Plasma bolts sizzled past as Mazarian shock troops poured from assault shuttles. Go! Randy shouted as the last of his team scrambled aboard. The freighter's engines roared to life, blasting them free of the doom station. We've got company, Zeke called from the cockpit. Three Mazarian cruisers moving to intercept. Randy gripped the co-pilot's chair. Get us into hyperspace. Any coordinates, just go. The stars blurred as they made the jump, narrowly evading their pursuers. When they emerged, a barren moon filled the view screen. That's it, Vega said, mandibles clicking. The weapon facility. Scans revealed a heavily fortified complex. Massive energy readings pulsed from its core. Randy's mind raced, formulating a plan. We don't have the firepower to take it head on, he said. But if we can get inside... He outlined a desperate strategy. A small team would infiltrate the facility while the others provided a distraction. Their goal, seize control of the weapon's core and transmit its specs to the council. It's suicide, Gunner growled. Maybe, Randy admitted, but it's our only shot. They struck under cover of the moon's magnetic storms. Randy led the infiltration team, Vega at his side. Alarms blared as they fought their way through fanatical guards. In the control room, Randy's fingers flew over alien consoles. Zeke, I'm patching you in. Get this data to the council. Now! A massive explosion rocked the facility. Through viewport, Randy saw their freighter erupt in flames, having rammed a loyalist warship. Gunner! Kasumi's anguished cry came over the comm. There was no time to mourn. Guards were battering down the door. Randy gripped his rifle, preparing for a last stand. Suddenly, the shooting stopped. A council peacekeeping fleet had arrived, responding to the transmitted data. A fragile ceasefire took hold as diplomats scrambled to make sense of the situation. But their ordeal wasn't over. The battered warship Anders broke through the council blockade, hell-bent on silencing the rebels. We need to move, Vega urged. They fled the decimated moon aboard a captured shuttle, narrowly evading Anders' barrage. With nowhere else to turn, Vega input coordinates for a remote asteroid base. My old mentor commands it, he explained. A rebel sympathizer. We'll be safe there. As they limped towards Sanctuary, Randy surveyed his battered crew. Over half their fighters lost. Gunner clinging to life in the med bay. The weight of their sacrifices pressed down on him. The asteroid loomed ahead, a fortress carved from rock. Commander Trowell's gruff voice crackled over the comm. Identify yourselves or be destroyed. Randy took a deep breath. This is Randy Alistar of the Human Exiles. We request asylum. A long pause then. Cleared for docking, Bay 3. Welcome to Outpost Defiance. As they touched down, Randy steeled himself for whatever challenges lay ahead. The real battle, he knew, was just beginning. Randy stepped off the shuttle onto the craggy floor of Outpost Defiance's hangar bay. The asteroid's artificial gravity tugged at his weary bones as he surveyed the ragtag group of survivors around him. Commander Trowell, a grizzled Mazarian with battle-scarred carapace, strode forward to meet them. His compound eyes flickered over the battered crew before settling on Randy. Alistair, Trowell clicked, mandibles working. Your transmission shook the Council to its core but we're not out of the nebula yet. Randy nodded grimly. Fleet Commander Malkar? Still at large and gaining support among the loyalists, Trowell confirmed. We need a game changer. A cold realization settled in Randy's gut. He turned to Vega, who stood silently at his side. Your old mentor, does he still have contacts in high places? 
Vega's antennae twitched. You can't be suggesting... Max Anders, Randy said, his voice hard. We need to talk to him. Hours later, Randy found himself face to face with his former mentor in a stark detention cell. Max's once imposing frame seemed diminished, his eyes haunted. I heard about Sarah, Randy said softly. I'm sorry. Max's teeth gritted. The rebels! They were right. And I was too blind to see it until... He broke off, unable to continue. Randy leaned forward. Help us bring down Malkar, for Sarah, for everyone who suffered under this regime. Max met his gaze, a flicker of the old fire returning. What do you need? With Max's intel, a daring plan took shape. Randy and Vega slipped aboard Malkar's flagship, the Imperator, disguised as maintenance drones. They navigated through crowded corridors, every step a potential betrayal. In a secluded data hub, Randy's fingers flew over holographic displays, uploading the damning evidence. Alarms blared. We're blown, Vega hissed. Plasma bolts sizzled past as security forces converged. Randy and Vega fought desperately, retreat cut off. Sudden explosions rocked the ship. A hidden bulkhead slid open, revealing a lithe figure in loyalist uniform. This way, the stranger urged. I'm Hakim, Rebel Deep Cover. They sprinted through maintenance tunnels, Hakim leading them to a waiting escape pod. As they jettisoned from the Imperator, Randy's calm crackled to life. Boss! Zeke's excited voice came through. You're not gonna believe this! Gunners, awake! Back at Outpost Defiance, Randy burst into the medbay. Gunner sat propped up, bandaged but alive, Kasumi at his side. The big man's scarred face broke into a rare smile. Thought you could finish this fight without me? Gunner rumbled. Kasumi's eyes shone. He's too stubborn to die. As Joy swept through the assembled rebels, Zeke cleared his throat. I, uh, might have an idea. It's crazy, but... He outlined his plan to upload Rami, their rogue AI ally, into the Loyalist network. Randy's mind raced, considering the possibilities. Do it, he ordered. What followed was a brutal campaign across asteroid outposts and derelict stations. Rami wreaked havoc in Loyalist systems while rebel cells struck hard and vanished. In a vicious firefight, Kasumi took a plasma bolt meant for Gunner, allowing him to eliminate Malkar's ruthless second-in-command. Victory seemed within reach until Malkar's reinforcements arrived. The outposts fell one by one, rebel positions overrun. Randy gathered his core team, Vega, Tral, and the newly freed Max in a makeshift war room. The Doomsday Weapon, Vega said, mandibles clicking anxiously. Our intel suggests it's nearing activation. Max's eyes narrowed. We need to draw Malkar out, make him vulnerable. A plan crystallized. Using Rami's infiltration of Loyalist comms, they crafted a message that would be impossible for Malkar to ignore, a chance to solidify his power through peace talks. As Malkar's fleet converged on the chosen space station, Randy led a strike team to board the flagship. Vega, Tral, and a miraculously recovered gunner provided cover fire from assault shuttles. They fought their way through corridors littered with the bodies of friend and foe alike. In Malkar's inner sanctum, they found the fleet commander himself, resplendent in gleaming armor. You're too late, Malkar snarled, activating a holographic display. The weapon is primed, the council capital will burn, and from its ashes, a new order will rise. Randy lunged forward, but Malkar's guards opened fire. The room erupted into chaos. Chaos. Plasma bolts seared the air, leaving ozone trails as they ricocheted off bulkheads. Randy dove behind an overturned console, his heart pounding. Through the acrid smoke, he glimpsed Malkar, smugly confident behind a wall of fanatical guards. The weapon is primed, Malkar's voice dripped with triumph. In moments, the council capital will be reduced to cosmic dust. Randy's mind raced. They'd come so far, sacrificed so much. He couldn't let it end like this. Zeke, he barked into his comm. Any luck overriding the targeting lock? Static crackled. Then Zeke's frustrated voice came through. It's no use, boss. The system's locked down tight. Only Malkar has the abort codes. 
Randy's eyes narrowed. He popped up from cover, squeezing off precise shots that dropped two guards. Malcar! he shouted. Call it off! You'll die here, too! The fleet commander's laughter was cold. A small price to pay for galactic order. Suddenly, Max's voice cut through the din. I have an idea, he said, his tone grim. It's risky, but it might be our only shot. As Max outlined his plan, Randy felt a chill. Neural imprinting, forcibly transferring Malkar's consciousness into a rebel host. It was dangerous, ethically murky, and their last hope. Do it, Randy ordered, silencing Vega's horrified protest with a sharp look. What followed was a blur of frantic activity. A captured rebel soldier, strapped down. Malkar, subdued by a lucky stun blast. The sickening whine of the neural transfer device. For a moment, hope flared as the imprint succeeded. Then everything went sideways. The host's eyes snapped open, filled with Malkar's murderous rage. He tore free of his restraints, lashing out with inhuman strength. Zeke! Randy shouted over the comm. Containment protocol! The air crackled with energy as Zeke remotely activated emergency force fields. The possessed soldier raged against the shimmering barriers, Malkar's consciousness a maelstrom of hate. I've got him! Zeke's voice was strained. Isolating his neural patterns? Transferring to Rami's matrix? The possessed soldier collapsed, strings cut. On the main view screen, a swirling vortex of data coalesced into a virtual representation of Malkar's psyche. Randy steeled himself. Jack me in, he ordered. The virtual world hit him like a sledgehammer. Blinding light, deafening noise, a maelstrom of sensory overload. Malkar's consciousness lashed out, reality warping with each psychic assault. Randy fought back, his own will manifesting as shields of crackling energy. He pushed through the chaos, searching for a weakness in Malkar's defenses. Just when defeat seemed inevitable, Inspiration struck. Randy reached deep, projecting not anger or force, but something unexpected. Love. Images of Malkar's family flickered to life, their faces etched with concern and hope. The assault faltered. In that moment of hesitation, Randy struck. He tore through Malkar's mental barriers, seizing the precious abort codes hidden within. Zeke now! Randy shouted, snapping back to physical reality. His body convulsed as the neural link disengaged. On the main screen, a countdown ticked away the final seconds. Zeke's fingers flew over the console, inputting the stolen codes. The numbers froze, then blinked out. A collective exhale filled the room. They'd done it. The weapon was neutralized. But as the adrenaline faded, the true cost became clear. Reports flooded in of Malkar's armada, now leaderless, fracturing into rival factions. The Mazarian civil war threatened to consume everything they'd fought for. In the tense silence that followed, Vega stepped forward. Her eyes were haunted, but her voice was steel. There's only one way to end this, she said. I have to go back. Randy's protest died on his lips as she outlined her plan. A high-profile rebel surrender, leveraging her status to force change from within. It was audacious, selfless, and probably suicidal. There has to be another way, Randy argued, even as a part of him recognized the cold logic of her strategy. Vega's mandibles clicked softly. You know there isn't, she said. She turned to Trowell, who nodded grimly. I'll make the arrangements, the old commander said. As final preparations were made, Randy found himself alone with Vega. Words failed him as he looked at his unlikely friend, this alien who had become family. Vega's antennae quivered with emotion. If this doesn't work, she said softly, you have to finish what we started, by any means necessary. Randy nodded, his throat tight. I will, he promised. He watched as Vega boarded Trowell's shuttle, her head held high. As the airlock sealed, Randy couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than a goodbye. It felt like the end of one chapter, and the beginning of something far darker. Randy watched the shuttle disappear into the void, Vega's words echoing in his mind. The weight of her sacrifice pressed down on him, a crushing burden of responsibility. We can't just let her go, Gunner growled, his scarred face contorted with anger. It's suicide. 
Zeke shook his head. It's our best shot at ending this war. We have to make it count. Randy's mind raced, calculating odds and weighing options. We do both, he said finally. Gunner, rally our loyalists. Get them behind Kasumi as interim leader. Zeke, you're with me. We're going hunting for allies. Hours later, Randy found himself in unfamiliar territory. A dimly lit bar on a backwater station, surrounded by the dregs of galactic society. He nursed a drink, hyper-aware of the concealed blaster at his hip. A hooded figure slid into the seat across from him. You're either very brave or very stupid, Hakim said, lowering his hood. Probably both. Randy leaned forward. What have you got for me? Hakim's eyes darted around the room before he spoke. There's a summit, top secret. Mazarian hardliners and corrupt council bigwigs. They're meeting to keep this war machine rolling. Where? Abandoned mining station in the Varex Nebula. But getting in, that's the tricky part. Randy's lips quirked in a humorless smile. Leave that to us. The next day, Randy and Zeke stood before a mirror, barely recognizing themselves. Their rebel uniforms were gone, replaced by the gaudy attire of sector merchants. I feel ridiculous, Zeke muttered, adjusting a garish hat. You look it, Randy replied. Perfect. Their ship, the Stardust Venture, was a far cry from their usual vessels. All flashy chrome and unnecessary embellishments. It screamed, Nouveau Riche, to anyone who laid eyes on it. As they approached the mining station, Randy's calm crackled. Unidentified vessel, state your business. Randy affected an oily accent. Thrace Vorden of Vorden Enterprises, here for the, uh, trade negotiations. A tense moment passed, then cleared for docking, Bay 7. They touched down in a cavernous hangar. As they disembarked, Randy's trained eye cataloged security weaknesses, potential escape routes. A stoic Mazarian official met them. This way, gentlemen, the talks are about to begin. They were led through winding corridors to an opulent conference room. Randy's breath caught as he took in the assembled dignitaries, Mazarian military brass, council oligarchs, all the power players prolonging this bloody conflict. As the meeting commenced, Randy scanned the room for potential allies. His gaze settled on a nervous-looking Mazarian scientist, fidgeting in his seat. Suddenly, the scientist leapt to his feet. This ends now, he shouted activating a device in his hand. Chaos erupted. Guards rushed forward. The scientist, Tarl, Randy realized, retreated, eyes wild. Rami, Tarl called out. Execute Protocol Omega. A familiar voice echoed through the room's speakers. Unable to comply. Primary directives altered. Tarl's face fell. No, no, no! Plasma bolts sizzled through the air. Randy grabbed Tarl, dragging him behind an overturned table. What the hell were you thinking? He hissed. Tarl's mandibles clicked rapidly. I have proof. Data on illegal weapons research. It could end the war. A guard shot grazed Randy's arm. He returned fire, dropping the Mazarian with a well-placed blast. Zeke! Randy shouted over the din. We need an exit. Zeke's voice came through his earpiece, strained. Working on it, boss, but you're not going to like it. Just do it. A few seconds later, alarms blared. Zeke's voice, tense. Singularity bomb. Primed and counting down. We've got five minutes. Randy's blood ran cold. He grabbed Tarl. Move! Now! They sprinted through corridors, dodging panicked dignitaries and confused guards. An explosion rocked the station, sending them sprawling. As they scrambled to their feet, Randy saw recognition dawn in a guard's eyes. It's Alistar, the Mazarian shouted. The rebel! They ran harder, lungs burning. The Stardust Venture came into view, Zeke standing at the open hatch. Go, 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 Randy yelled, practically throwing Tarl inside. As they lifted off, Randy caught a glimpse of the station through the viewscreen. It shimmered, reality warping around it. Then in a silent flash, it was gone, along with everyone left on board. Randy sagged against the bulkhead, the weight of lives lost pressing down on him. But there was no time to mourn. He activated his calm. 
Gunner status report. The big man's voice came through, tense with exertion. Not good, boss. Some of our own think we've gone soft. We're under attack from all sides. Randy's fist tight. Hold the line. We're on our way. He turned to Zeke. Set course for Mazarian space. We're getting Vega out. Zeke's eyes widened. That's suicide. Maybe, Randy said, his voice hard. But we're out of options. It's time to end this war, once and for all. Randy's eyes narrowed as he surveyed the rebel forces assembled before him. This is it, he said, his voice low and tense. Two teams. Gunner, Kasumi, you're on diversion. Hit their military installations hard and fast. Zeke, Tarl, you're with me. We're going straight for the heart. Gunner nodded grimly, hefting his heavy blaster. We'll give him hell, boss. As the diversionary team moved out, Randy turned to Zeke and Tarl. Last chance to back out, he said. Zeke snorted. And miss all the fun? Not a chance. Tarl's mandibles clicked nervously, but his voice was steady. I'm with you. The jump to Mazara Prime was disorienting, reality twisting and bending around them. One moment they were in the relative safety of their ship. The next they materialized in the bustling heart of the capital arcology. Alarms blared instantly. Randy's team moved with practice precision, cutting through the first wave of surprise guards. Plasma bolts seared the air, leaving scorch marks on gleaming walls. Tarl, Randy shouted over the din. Get those contacts of yours moving. The Mazarian scientist tapped frantically at a data pad. Moments later, security doors began slamming shut seemingly at random, trapping response teams and sowing confusion. They fought their way deeper into the complex, each level offering fiercer resistance. Randy's muscles burned, his breath coming in ragged gasps. A stray shot grazed his shoulder, searing flesh. Suddenly, Zeke's voice cut through the chaos. Boss, I've got a lock on Vega's signal. They're moving her. Randy's heart raced. Where? Converging with our position. Looks like, oh shit, they're prepping for a public execution. Rage fueled Randy's advance. They burst into a cavernous atrium just as Vega's prison convoy entered from the opposite side. Time seemed to slow as their eyes met across the space. The air erupted in a storm of plasma fire. Randy dove for cover, returning fire with deadly accuracy. Vega, seizing the moment of chaos, headbutted her guard and wrenched free. Zeke, Randy shouted, now! On view screens throughout the capital, Tarl's damning data began to play. Classified footage of illegal weapons tests, recordings of closed-door meetings, planning atrocities. The full extent of the regime's crimes laid bare for all to see. A deafening rumble shook the building. Randy's blood ran cold as he recognized the telltale energy signature. No, he breathed. It can't be. The doomsday weapon, thought neutralized, screamed down from orbit. Its payload struck with apocalyptic force, vaporizing huge swaths of the city instantly. The shockwave hit moments later, shattering windows and toppling structures for kilometers in every direction. When the dust settled, an eerie silence fell over the ruined capital. Randy pulled himself from the rubble, ears ringing. He saw Vega nearby, coughing and battered but alive. Zeke emerged from behind a fallen column, his left arm hanging at an odd angle. Chancellor Cracks lay pinned beneath a fallen beam, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. As Randy approached, the dying Mazarian let out a bitter laugh. Congratulations, Cracks wheezed. You won. The truth is out. His eyes glazed over as he surveyed the devastation. And look what it cost us all. Randy said nothing as Cracks's breath rattled to a stop. He turned to Vega, who stumbled into his arms. They clung to each other, surrounded by the ashes of their Pyrrhic victory. In the distance, faint sounds of fighting still echoed. The war wasn't truly over, not yet. But as Randy looked at the small group of survivors, human, Mazarian, rebel, and regime alike, he realized that the rules had changed. Whatever came next, it would be built on the ashes of the old order. He helped Vega to her feet. Come on, he said quietly. We've got work to do. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel 
and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.